Now I'm going to break down, this is just looking at the, the realized profit itself in terms of USD. So SOFA is looking at the average profit or loss multiple locked in, right, in terms of a percent. What we're looking at here is just the dollar value. So how much actual capital had to flow into Bitcoin to absorb those coins? Another way to think about it, let's just imagine for simplicity, somebody bought their coins at the FTX lows at 15,000. They're now selling them here at 70,000. The delta between however many coins they bought multiplied by 70,000 minus 15,000, that's the price change, that is the realized profit on that coin. Now we've broken it down by short-term holders in red, long-term holders in blue, and you can see much the same as SOFA, the dollar value of how much profit is being locked in right now um, peaked over $2.6 billion per day, per day. This is very, very meaningful sums, um, but at the same time, Bitcoin is much larger than it was during previous cycles in terms of market cap, it continues to grow, there's more coins in circulation, and obviously the ETFs are fairly substantial. So. We see this kind of market cap, but also in, inflow of demand growth each cycle. This is literally part of the growth story of Bitcoin over time. But nevertheless, these are fairly substantial numbers. And of course, realized profit is also telling us about the demand because for every sell side, there is somebody coming in on the demand side. Every seller has a buyer and every buyer has a seller. So these matching of realized profit and realized loss and all these different components is telling us something about the amount of capital flowing into Bitcoin, whilst also telling us that there's a series of people who are divesting. And those coins must obviously be absorbed. Otherwise, we will get corrections. We will get local peaks. We will go into consolidations. These are all components that functionally create price action because nothing goes up or down in a straight line. And it is this sell side pressure, which we're measuring, observing, slicing and dicing, that tells us about what the market is actually doing. So again, these can be brought into all sorts of different models. Some people will look at it from a statistical framework. Some people will look at just absolute levels. Whatever works to actually understand and break down the market, the important thing to take away is that realized profit, we can break it down by long and short term holders and see whether it's traders, people who recently acquired, people have held their coins for a long time. What's the magnitude of that sell side? How does it compare to previous cycles? How does it, you know, all these different elements come into the mix.